Hello, my name is Will. I'm the host of The Bald Book Geek. I also host The Viking Writer. Please like, subscribe, share, and do the usual crap that you do to try and get some interaction on YouTube. I know, I know. Anyway, five fantasy novels you guys need to read today. So yeah, five fantasy novels that you guys have to read today. And I picked out five novels that these top five lists are always very difficult to make. Sometimes I pick them out just because they're fun. Sometimes they're picked out. This is a mixture of fun, obscure, actually predominantly obscure, but there's a handful of well-known in this one. So I'm going to start first with Blood Air. This is the Y end of fantasy, but it's definitely borderline into adult. New adult does not exist, by the way. It's a marketing ploy. I wouldn't be happy with my a teenage child reading this book. I think it only got lump YA for a marketing issue because YA fantasy was very big at the time. It's a good book. There was a really weird hate campaign by writing people on like forums and it all started there. You know, this person who had no platform and didn't do anything suddenly got a book deal. A lot. There was this lot of jealousy and this was before the book even had a name, before anyone knew what it was like. And then that jealousy spilled out into a takedown and cancel campaign led by people that never even read the book in the first place. Hmm, that happens a lot. Jealousy is a fun colour. This is a great book. It's bloody, it's a revenge plot. She's out for revenge of her father, fallen kingdoms, all of this stuff. It's a great book, it's fun. This is the Alcrate, Alcrate, Illumicrate special edition, which is signed and came with a little letter from the thing, which if you watch a previous video, you know how I got the high hands on this, which I'm kind of shocked because this is not a cheap book. <laughs> absolutely phenomenal i'm looking forward to book two book two is coming apparently next year and i sent my begging letter to the publisher to try and get a review copy blood air now this book is very obscure it's imperial light by mary conran this is a 1990s fantasy novel she's written four books one of them is a non-fiction and she didn't write for a long time and if you read her non-fiction you find out why these are very hard to get they're very obscure. Very few people know they even exist. I'm slightly obsessed with this cover art, by the way. I read these first when I was a teenager and my copies were all paperbacks and then I they vanished over the years and then I found them secondhand. I wanna say this, check out her work. It's big, classic, high fantasy novels, well-written, her use of language is beautiful. This is kind of your adventure, exile, all of that stuff. Now, how to get these. If you want physical copies, yes, you can get them reasonably cheaply on Amazon UK. I don't know about the rest of the world. They are available digitally. You can get these books with really naff covers on Kindle and Kobo. And I, th I think Kobo and I think iBooks, but I've seen them on Kindle. So they do exist in some form or another. Go out there, look for her work because she's fundamentally underrated. She has no social media presence, nothing. Great writer. Read her non-fiction, it's quite eye-opening, but try Imperial Light if you can get your hands on it. The Oyster Thief. Two parallel plots, one involving a mermaid, one involving a human, intertwining together in this beautiful fantasy novel. I got sent this a few years ago by the writer and I reviewed it on my channel. It, it's stunning and it's quite, it's not quite like any fantasy I've ever read before. It's so well put together with, with strong characters and this adventure and this plot. I do like adventure and fantasy novels. I like the sense that we're going in big places. Again, no one talks about this book. I don't know why. It has woke points. It's by a female writer. It's fantasy by a female writer. So woke points. So I'm amazed people just didn't read it for that. This is, like most books that people read, this is a brilliant book and mind-blowing in that. And I'm, I'm really, it is a shame that it didn't quite get any. No one talked about it and I don't know why. If you want adventure, if you want great characters, if you want great world building, check out The Oyster Thief. Another mermaid book that didn't get much love, Mermaid Moon. I got sent this by the publisher again and I was a little hesitant because it is listed as a YA. I mean, seriously. I wasn't disappointed. You know, this misconception that apparently I hate YA led by a crazy woman who's who tried to do a hate campaign about me on. I mean, this is absolutely phenomenal. Again, it's that adventure, it's, it's adventure, it's mermaids, a sea witch, relationships, families, all covered within the pages of this book. 
The world building is great. The characters are well-rounded and well-written. And it's about a woman, a mermaid, looking for her mother. It's, it's beautifully written and examines that relationship beautifully. Again, no one talked about this book. A fantasy novel by a female writer that no one talked about. I'm amazed because, again, a lot of people in the book community just read stuff for woke points. So I'm amazed that didn't even catch on. Or they'll just buy it because the cover's pretty. But this is a great book. Do, do check out this book. <laughs> I'm stroking books. Do check it out and do... Tell me what you think if you've read it. It's, it's a great little read. It's fun. Okay, so this is my cheat. His Dark Materials Trilogy by Philip Pullman commented that this, you know, stuff happens and they're looking for death. This is a weird book in the sense that as a child, because it's a kid's book. Someone mistakenly called this YA. It's not YA. This is a children's book. As a kid's book, it's an adventure novel. It's a free adventure novels and you have all these great characters and all this stuff happening and, and Spellbard and Northern Lights and fantasy worlds and great creatures and epic battles. As an adult, you have metaphysics, the origin of the universe, dark matter, church versus science, um, including character who's an ex-nun who becomes a scientist, church versus state, and also freedom of thought and free will. Yeah, this book crosses... This is a book that the Vatican called one of the most dangerous books. If, if you're pissing off Catholics, you're doing something right. So, his dark materials. Do read these books. They are phenomenal. They are beautiful. They're big. They're epic. And they're one of my favourite reads. And I probably do a yearly read of his dark materials every year. You can get them in individuals, beautiful hardbacks. You can even get them in varying bind ups with all three. And there's like short, there's so much set within this world. Tell me what you think in the comments below. I'm interested to find out what you guys think. And as always, bye.